Oh dear. Oh god. I've got half a chair. <laughs> I'm coming up. You can see Hator just over there. And there the last car goes. Oh. There is one thing that could be quite problematic tonight in terms of staying in this van where I am right now. And that's because you're not actually supposed to. So this week's camping setup is this camper van right here. And it is the Ventura VR400. Now this camper van has actually been built on a 2024 Peugeot Boxer. So this van is literally brand spanking new. It's done just over a thousand miles on the engine. And tonight I am going to be the first person ever to actually camp, use, and experience what this vehicle is actually like to stay overnight in. This vehicle is exactly the same as mine. However, the camper van that I'm gonna show you couldn't be any more different. It honestly has some features and some tech in there, which I've never seen in any camper ever. First thing I've got to say is I absolutely love the graphics and the color of this vehicle. Kind of the green stripes with the black trim and then the gray actual body of the vehicle. It looks bloody awesome. It really does look like a proper adventure wagon. And where I am this week, it's probably the prime vehicle that you'd actually want to be driving through these roads. Oh my God, it is so, so windy out there. Because the vehicle's so new, it gives me that modern day technology, which to be honest with you, in a lot of vehicles I've been lacking recently. Excuse my extremely long iPhone cable, but I can actually plug my phone into here, get up Apple CarPlay, get up Google Maps. So for once, instead of having my phone down on the bottom left, I can actually just look at the nice, fancy, high-tech monitor and uh, see where the hell I'm going. Check airbag well that can't be good right let's start you up my friend why do i keep driving all these brand new vehicles recently it's not good for my nerves and we're off into dark ball my friends So the area that I'm actually in right now is absolutely beautiful. It's not a part of the UK I'm that familiar with, but the landscapes around here are unbelievable. Just massive rock formations, all of this beautiful countryside and rolling hills, loads of wild sheep and wild horses. But there's one thing that could be quite problematic, that apparently you're not actually allowed to sleep or camp overnight in a vehicle in this national park so i'm not too sure what i'm going to do about tonight's park up to be honest with you as always i'm going to wing it and see what happens i tell you what what a place this is what a road straight away having picked up this vehicle this morning you can tell obviously that it's an eye catcher. Within about half an hour of me actually picking this vehicle up, I had two completely different people coming up to me saying, wow, nice motorhome. Nowadays, camper vans and motorhomes, some of them are costing more than 70, 80,000 pounds and even up to 100,000. But this one right here is actually 52,000 pounds, which in today's market, I think is fairly reasonable. If I can find somewhere to park around here, this is gonna be beautiful. Okay, here's a nice car park, which so far, I don't see any signs that say no overnight parking not allowed. We've got one other camper van there. I don't know why I decided to come in this entrance. Woo. Oh man, this would be a great place if I can stay here. The car park is absolutely mahoosive. And if I just tuck myself away in the corner, I'm not causing any issues. Welcome to what could be potentially home for the night. Before we crack on with the rest of the video, I wanted to say a big thank you to BetterHelp, who are the pay partner for this video. And if you guys have been watching the channel for a long time, you will know that I have often spoken about my mental health, my headspace, how I'm feeling, because I genuinely do not think there is anything better than actually speaking to somebody and saying the words that consume your brain out loud because trust me speaking to somebody can make such a huge difference so i've genuinely been doing therapy for the last couple of years now this is actually the second kind of cycle of therapy that i've ever had i did it about four or five years ago i then stopped 
for no real reason to be honest with you and then I've got back into it over the last year. I'm now starting to understand myself so much better. My emotions, my feelings, my thought processes which can be a little wild I have to admit. Therapy is not only a benefit to yourself but I think it also benefits the people around you because you can understand humans and emotions and feelings and how to deal with all of these life struggles that everybody has in a much much better way. There's absolutely still a huge stigma about mental health especially with men my age almost 30 years old suicide rates are extremely high and you still get plenty of comments nowadays from saying man up get on with it don't be such a wimp but genuinely if you haven't tried therapy you really should so better help is an online therapy service that actually connects you with a professional therapist who has years of experience that can actually help you with any problems that you might have all you do is go onto their website betterhelp.com or you can head to betterhelp.com forward slash wills whereabouts you answer a few very simple questions and better help will then connect you with a professional therapist who has years of experience helping people who are struggling with just life in general. So if you want to check out BetterHelp and actually let them connect you with a therapist who can help support you, all from the comfort of your own van, your own home, wherever the heck it is, make sure to head to betterhelp.com forward slash Will's Whereabouts and enjoy a special discount on your first month. So we've got one other older style of camper van just over there. By the looks of things, it's an auto sleeper something. I can't quite tell and uh, just this massive car park. And like I say, just up there in the distance is Hay Tall, which uh, depending on the weather tomorrow morning, oh, damn, my van life friends are leaving. That now makes me think whether I can or can't stay here tonight. I don't know. Let me show you around and then uh, we'll figure all of that out much later this evening. Oh my God. It is so windy and cold out there. So we are now in the living space of the vehicle. And I know what you're thinking. Will, what's all the fuss about? Because it looks so basic and extremely minimalistic in here. And I'll go through all of that in a minute. So the whole electrical system for this vehicle actually runs off this control panel, which I've got to say, I do like a lot. Looks very fancy, very bougie, and uh, gives it that high-tech kind of vibe. As you can see here, on the right hand side, we've got the fresh water levels, which is saying we're at a max. The waste is empty, battery percent, 100%, and the voltage at 12.7. So I'm gonna flick on now the main lights, which nothing will happen, and I'll show you why. Then I'm gonna flick on the under cupboard lights. Nice. And the under worktop light. Very nice. So the reason the main lights aren't coming on is because they're actually touch on and touch off, which is exactly the same as I have in my own van. However, I never actually use them and these ones are far brighter and much nicer. So the reason I actually keep saying how different this van is, is because this here, space, wow, actual space to move up and down. To give you guys a much better understanding of how big this space in here actually is, this double seat actually swivels round. So I'm gonna spin that round and then you're gonna get a feel for really how different this kind of setup really is. I've been told it's a bit of a bastard to spin around. So bear with me. This is very different to how most other swivel chairs spin from my experience, but you just unwind these toggles. Oh, keep it somehow like that. I'm not really sure. Can I just trying to figure this out. We have movement. Okay. Whew. Whoa. I think I was spinning it the wrong way, even though I'm pretty sure you were meant to spin it anti-clockwise. Oh dear. Oh God. I've got half a chair. <laughs> a few moments later. Oh. 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 We've done it. Oh, I certainly wouldn't want to be doing that every day. So this is why I keep saying how unusual this vehicle really is because this gap and this spacing here, and a lot of people might be wondering, it is extremely minimalistic. It really does look like a VW interior just in a much bigger vehicle. But I actually think something like this has huge benefits because you can easily fit bikes in here, a motorbike, you've got three seats there. You've of course got two seats there, plus the additional driver's seat there, which means you can actually sit 
six people in here. And what's even better is you can sleep two people down here on this rock and roll bed and then two people up here in the pop top. Go up by yourself. Now with the pop top up, you've got even more space, which is why I think this is such a good van for families. If you came away with your two or three kids, they could quite easily sleep up there. They could obviously sit on the back seats there and the husband and wife, the husband and husband, the wife and wife, whatever you want to call it nowadays, could actually sleep on this rock and roll bed. I'm coming up. I don't know why I like a pop top so much, but I just do. Oh, wow. Here we go. This is so spacious up here, honestly. This is pretty damn cool. We've got the LED strips on either side as well, which add a nice bit of ambient lighting. Tonight probably couldn't have been a worse night to actually sleep on a rooftop, tent, pop top, whatever you want to call it. It is so windy outside. It's honestly about 20, 30 mile an hour winds. And uh, right now it's still pretty windy, but already you can obviously hear the, uh, the sides of the pop top just flapping away. It's gonna be like that bloody Land Rover Defender all over again. The mattress is pretty comfy, I've got to say. It's just a really nice, well-made, double-size air mattress. We've got some windows to open up and have a look out. Oh, oh, lovely. That's the thing I like about pop tops, that you can literally just unzip your window and then you can look out to your beautiful view, which uh, tomorrow morning, if I stayed up here, I would have a beautiful view. You can see Haytor just over there. Imagine waking up in the snow or on a beautiful summer's day, sleeping up here and then opening the window up to just the most incredible view. That's something I need to experience. We've also got another window up here with a view of my car park, <laughs> which is even bloody better because I can uh, nosy out and see who's knocking about. I think I've now come to the conclusion that pop tops on any vehicle, whether it's a van, a motorhome, not that I've ever seen that, or a Land Rover Defender, are only something that should be used when you've got nice weather and zero mile an hour winds. I'm gonna put all of this away because I wanna try and look a little bit stealth tonight if I can. And uh, with the pop top, that's obviously a big giveaway. And it's just, to be honest with you, far too windy to be sleeping up there. So I'm so sorry to disappoint you. I'm gonna sleep on the rock and roll bed. I really wanna try and get a good night's sleep if I can. And up there with 30 mile an hour winds, there's no chance. So with the rest of the camper van, this is obviously all of your kitchen space down here. We've actually got a pull out fridge drawer, which I really like. You've obviously then got some storage in here where I've currently got all my pots and pans, more storage under here and a microwave. Under here, we've got a pretty small sink. If I'm being totally honest, I would actually rather have a bigger sink here and a little less work surface space because there's a table at the back there which attaches onto those rails, which means you've already added a bit of extra work surface space. So under here, I know there's a few of you already thinking, Will, you don't need the showers. We know exactly what that is. And I can guarantee you 99% of people are gonna think that this is an induction hob. However, you're wrong. You're still wrong. This is actually a two-in-one heater and a hob. I'll be honest, I've never actually seen anything like this ever in any camper van. It's from a company called Wallace. And, uh, you know, on the front, it just looks like some sort of stainless steel cover. You lift it up, you've got your hob. But like I said, it's also your heater because what happens is if we go down here, I turn it on. We're then gonna have to wait about five minutes for the thing to basically boot up. This is actually plumbed in to the diesel tank of the vehicle, like any sort of diesel heater. But what actually happens is when I want to cook, these will start to get hot and I can cook like I was using induction. However, it's not induction. It's just diesel basically heating these kind of hot plates. Then when you put this down, it actually blows out hot air from the hob into your living space, which makes it a two-in-one diesel heater and a hob. First time I will have ever used it. 
and uh, it's definitely a fancy little gadget and gizmo and like I said something that I've not seen before so while we wait for that to heat up you've got more storage up above here which I've just shoved all of my bedding in more storage down the back and of course some more storage on the side the really nice thing about this actual chair is one like I said it converts into a bed but also you're probably wondering what these rails are on either side and you've actually got nine different fixing points so if you wanted to move the bench here here or here then you could and why that's handy is because this van can really be used for so many different occasions not just as an actual camper van you could use this as an amazon delivery driver and chuck all your boxes in here and then use it as a normal day van it's not the type of vehicle that personally i think you'd want to live in because it lacks a bit of homely touches but it's extremely practical and it's quite versatile I have actually had a look on Park for Night and where I am right now actually shows as a place where people have camped overnight before. So I feel like I'm actually gonna stay here. I'm not gonna bother trying to go elsewhere. Potentially there could be some sort of ranger of the park who comes around later to try and kick me out or basically say move on and of course i will move on but this seems like a great little spot to be honest with you and there the last car goes so i've just checked on my weather app and the wind speeds apparently are 32 mile an hour gusts and trust me even when you're inside the vehicle you can feel it which is the biggest reason why i am not sleeping up on the pop top not with 32 mile an hour winds blowing past <laughs> that just would be a recipe for literally no sleep whatsoever So tonight's dinner is actually going to be one of my favorite van life meals ever and probably one of my favorite meals in real life as well in real life and in van life they're the same thing but i'm basically going to be cooking up a chorizo chicken pasta dish sometimes i forget to show you guys all of the ingredients but just to quickly run through we've got some cream some chicken breast some garlic red onion pasta of course some flat leaf parsley some chorizo some peppers some parmesan a chicken stock cube we have got some tomato puree and your classic mixed herbs and salt and pepper and all that jazz i'm also very interested to see what this is actually like to cook on because that is boiling right now if i was to touch that with my bare hand yeah i don't want to be burning my hand again but it does actually blow out a fair decent amount of hot air Right, here comes the fun part. What is this like to cook on? How long is that gonna take to get hot? Not that long, by the feel of things. This is the current setup. I keep going on about it, but the space is just ridiculous. Hot, that's for sure. No messing around here. And it certainly pumps out enough warm air. We are certainly getting there. I'd love to tell you what it smells like, but you wouldn't be able to smell it anyway. It smells bloody delicious. Whoa. I think I may have cooked for the entire community 
in Dartmoor. We've got a massive bowl of chicken chorizo waiting to be mixed in with all of this. Still not a single soul. It's about 7.30 right now. And uh, fingers crossed, touch wood, I'm actually able to stay here. Oh, oh my God, that is a lot of pasta. Holy Christ. I forget how much a whole pack of pasta really is. One thing I really don't like about that cooker and heater all in one is that I can't really turn it off to clean it because it's so hot. And if I turn it off, I'm not gonna have any heat. And the other thing is that noise is gonna be going all night because if I don't have the heating on, it's gonna be a very, very cold evening. You guys are always asking me in the comments for the recipe. So I will make sure that I link the recipe and all of the ingredients that you need to this meal down in the description. So uh, if you wanna check it out, then uh, you can try this one at home yourself. Mm. No matter how many times I have this meal, it tastes just as good as the first time I had it. So I've had pretty much this heater on for the last few hours. I've obviously had the lights on for multiple hours and we're sitting at about 82%. The temperature inside is 19 degrees, which is lovely. And then the humidity is 54%. So obviously when I actually head off to bed, which to be honest, will probably only be another hour or so, I'd imagine that's gonna drop down to about 75%, which is gonna be more than enough to see me through the night. And then tomorrow morning, I'll uh, probably wake up with about 70% battery, but it should be absolutely fine. The battery size in here is only 100 amp hours, which isn't huge, but you can actually charge it when you're driving and there are actually solar panels on the top as well. So on a beautiful sunny day, which we won't be having for probably a good few weeks now, you could at least charge the, uh, the battery up when the sun is out. Here is my bed for this evening, seat belts and all. I've got to be honest, normally I'm not a huge fan of a rock and roll bed because they can be slightly uncomfortable. This one at least looks like it's got some decent size, nice and thick memory foam. So hopefully it should be a little bit more comfortable. Looks like my feet will slightly be hanging off the edge of the bed, but to be fair, that isn't really a problem. At least it's gonna be nice and warm in here and with the background noise of the heater, which adds a bit of white noise, it means it blocks out all of the noise of the wind going on outside. I'm gonna get myself a nice early night. Currently, it's actually five to nine. However, I've got a book in my bag and I've got some YouTube videos I'm sure that I want to watch. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed for a good night's sleep on the rock and roll bed in the Ventura VR 400. And uh, we'll see tomorrow what the weather is like and fingers crossed, this will be a beautiful place to wake up to in the morning. Good morning. I uh, have just woken up and uh, it is extremely, extremely foggy and misty out there, but a nice little spot to wake up to. I slept pretty well actually, considering I was a little bit concerned about the rock and roll bed, but actually it was pretty damn comfortable. My back feels straight. I've had the heater going all night and as you can hear in the background, still going now. The battery is on 51% right now and one other person has just arrived in this car park. So, uh, a great little spot and a uh, successful night. There's one problem right now, which is I'm having a bit of a van life emergency, shall we say. Please, please, please. It's gonna be locked, isn't it? Oh, thank God. Well, mother nature was certainly calling this morning and that really was an emergency. It's the first time I've ever been caught out like that. So uh, there's a first for everything, but I've actually had to drive down to Haytor National Park Visitor Center because I knew they had a toilet there and uh, it is absolutely beautiful this morning. So I just drove down, the van is parked there. Only one other car in here this morning 
and then Haytor rock formation is just up there. <laughs> I had to drive down with the bed still down with the chair swiveled round still. So I'm gonna pack the van away and uh, get myself ready to uh, just live my best life this morning. Well, I'd love to go for a bit of a walk this morning and show you a bit more of the landscapes around here, but it's absolutely pointless because you won't be able to see anything. It is so foggy. I've just got the drone up and you can literally see nothing but fog and mist. It's been a fun, pleasurable experience, as always, to come and check out a vehicle with a completely different layout to my own and a completely different van to any of the others that I've actually created videos on recently. If you guys have enjoyed today's video, please make sure to give the video a like, make sure to subscribe, and let me know down in the comments what vehicle you want to see me go out in next, whether it's a fancy luxury one or whether it's a 500 pound budget vehicle. And if you've got any vehicles of your own that you want me to come and do a video on, drop me a message. Just don't scratch it, Will. A few sharp rocks knocking about.